Okay, so let's get started. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're at Firebolt, super proud to host Alexandra Sudilovsky here with us from AppsFlyer to present this webinar about scaling self-service BI to a thousand users. Amazing uh, use case. Alexandra uh, is a senior BI expert and a Looker Guild master. She's actually much more. I would call her a data engineer. I would call her a data architect. I would call her a, a data expert. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm sure you'll have a good time listening to uh, this amazing use case. Before we do get started, uh, there's a couple of uh, poll questions that we want to ask you and we we'll launch them now so we could get to know you a little bit better. So question number one. Which data warehouse are you currently using? Is it Redshift? Is it BigQuery? Is it, are you running on Athena or Snowflake or something else? Uh, cast your vote into the pop-up, please. Alexandra, you cannot vote. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it seems it, everybody's either on Snowflake or on something not on this list. Good to know. Okay, interesting. interesting. Uh, second question. How long do your slowest queries take? Do even your slowest queries take only a few seconds? Do they run in minutes or even worse, hours? Or are you still waiting for them? Cast your vote. Minutes, minutes. I don't like queries that take minutes. I barely like queries that take seconds. We want them faster than that, we'll talk about it. Uh, and final question. What are your biggest data challenges? Hard to scale, query performance, cost, all of the above. All of the above, uh, uh, quite predictable, I have to say. Okay, uh, I forgot to introduce myself. So my name is Boaz Farkas. I'm the chief product officer here at Firebolt. Uh, throughout this journey, uh, I was lucky enough to, to get to know Alexandra uh, and actually learn a lot from her. So I hope you enjoy the show. Alexandra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Boaz, for the introduction. It's great to be here today. Thanks for inviting me. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so uh, today I'm going to share with you our uh, story, our use case. I'm going to walk you through the process that uh, we've been uh, doing uh, in the last three years, um, with, which basically is uh, from zero to more than 1,000 users uh, in the BI. And uh, let's get started. Hope you will enjoy it. Oops. So uh, as for the agenda for today, we will start uh, from the Apps Flyer intro to explain a bit about the company and what we do. And then I will uh, walk you through our data lake and all our data sources uh, and what we use them for. And then we will uh, talk about the, the challenges that uh, we've been facing during this process and the scale and everything else and the solutions that we've been uh, came up to, how to solve it and uh, the ways we do it today. So AppsFlyer is a, a mobile attribution and marketing analytics platform that uh, provides end-to-end -end performance metrics and event tracking functionality for a, a mobile marketing uh, market. So basically after applying an SDK in an in application, we start to collect all the in-app events and clicks and everything else that come from an application which eventually as the result, we provide the full dashboard of performance metrics and we collect everything, uh, clicks, impressions, install, of course, engagements, revenue, uh, campaign costs, and much more marketing KPIs like CPM and conversion rate and CPI, LTV, ROI, and et cetera, et cetera, in many, many different ways. Um, 
giving marketing uh, and analysts to basically uh, to see the full picture of what's going on in the campaign in the in their campaigns and in order for us to be able to do all that we need to collect on a daily basis a lot of data a huge amount of data so currently we have about a 120 billions rows processed on a daily basis and we store this data in the AWS S3, which is about 90 terabytes of data on a daily basis. We also have BigQuery uh, with about, even now it's 45 petabytes of data. And as you can see, the annual growth is huge, about uh, twice, uh, about twice uh, X in a year. So it's a really, really big data that we need to collect, uh, transform, uh, analyze, and et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so let's talk a, a little bit about the data lake and what kind Alexander, of data. I, ha I have to jump in correctly. It's not really, really big data. It's really, 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 really big data. Big data, yes. <laughs> really, 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 really big data. Really. Um, so I, I think this was the first time when I actually really realized what is a big data when you're like analyzing petabytes of data and billions of rows on a daily basis. Um, yeah, some, sometimes you're unsure, do I have big data or not? But sometimes you're absolutely sure. Yes, I know this is big data. No <laughs> like doubt. in this case, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt at all. So let's dive a little bit into the data lake. So as I mentioned, we have a BigQuery and we store there all our traffic data in a row in a row data format. So actually it's a huge data set, as I said, 40, about 45 petabytes of data currently. And we use it for analytics on the BI side for in, internal um, uh, BI analytics, we aggregate uh, those tables and we use materialized views and we say that, save it aside in a much more aggregated way. So we will be able to analyze it much efficiently. Another data uh, set that we have is the S3 actually, and we store a parquet format and we use Athena above S3 to actually uh, analyze all this data and it's aggregated traffic data, which we use Spark SQL and uh, sometimes Python to run uh, behind the scenes and aggregation process and save it in S3. And also we use S3 to aggregate our traffic data and join this data with other business data, like um, as we see below the AWS RDS, which is a relational database with a much smaller data set. And we sync all our internal applications like Salesforce, Jira, Jira and Zendesk, and of course, billing information and much more other business data. So we join this traffic data with business data to really see the full picture of what's going on in the, in the company. And our newest addition to the data lake is actually Firebolt, <clears throat> which we've started implement a couple of months ago. Uh, I will explain uh, about it a bit further in, in a more deep way, but actually we also, we use currently Fireball to take all our data uh, from S3 and to migrate it from Athena to Fireball. Um, so our BI visualization platform is Looker. Um, three years ago, we chose to take Looker as our BI analytics platform. And today we have more than 1,000 users. Um, to be precise, 1,136 users in Looker. All the company across every business uh, department, we use Looker. We use it inside the R&D to evaluate their inside work. We use it for product managers to analyze our product and everything that's going on in the traffic data and product. Um, we measure our product and we use it in all our business department like finance, CSM, sales, um, IT operations, HR. I don't think there is a, a, a department today internally in Apps Flyer that don't, doesn't use Looker. So it's our, um, it's our base, uh, um, one source of truth basically for all our analytics. Um, so let's see how, how was challenging all this way. And I mean, we've started 
three and a half years ago with Looker, with four analysts, just four analysts. Um, I mean, huge big data, it, it's been already been there, but a uh, huge amount of data was always, always a challenge for AppsFlyer. I mean, even when we were picking the BI tool and doing some POC with different uh, tools, we actually decided to uh, go with Looker because it provided us immediately uh, the solution for our needs, connecting directly to our data sources and actually using the benefits of those great databases like Athena and BigQuery, which we actually send the query every time directly from Looker to the database. And that's, uh, uh, there all the calculation is happening so it was a huge benefit for us and uh, it was really it could really deal with huge amount of data another challenge that we were uh, facing during the way was very very quick uh, growth of the company almost forex in two years from 200 users we started with three years ago currently more than thousand users so it's a scale that you need to support and adapt very quickly to be able to support them and not um, create a bottleneck inside the BI team. As I said uh, at the beginning, from no front-end BI uh, to Looker with hundreds of users, currently thousands of users. Uh, when I joined AppSlyer, they had only one uh, dashboard, one basic dashboard that was built inside the product team that was just uh, presenting the basic traffic, uh, aggregated traffic of uh, our customers without any business data provided um, with this data. And in three years, uh, we have a huge BI department and analytics for all the company. And that was a quite a challenge to achieve. Another challenge was the new business departments that use data and analytics joining our services when they like us to provide data. I mean, um, once one department started to get analytics, it was spreading across all the company. Everyone wanted to get analytics immediately. We also need Looker. We also want analytics. So it was like a, something that we need to support very quickly. Uh, more Looker de developers to support uh, almost 6x in two years from four analysts um, to about 60 analysts in three years. All of them work on a different data set for, for different business departments. And it was quite challenging to providing all of them uh, this uh, support from our side. And uh, another challenging uh, issue for us was the decentralized BI and analytics approach. I mean, we, as we are using the self-serve approach, as we work with a self-serve approach, we actually don't really create a dashboard inside the BI team. And we just provide the data and we leave it for analysts to just uh, create a, and, and, and um, analyze the data. So in time, I mean, during the time when you have a lot of work already done, we've started to see that we have the same KPIs calculated different in different departments. So the challenge was, okay, how do we make it one source of truth again? I mean, how do we make it aligned with a different business departments? For example, um, churn uh, KPIs or something like that, that the sales uh, was calculated in one way and the CSM uh, team was calculated in different way and getting different numbers. Um, so this align alignment it was quite challenging and we'll see how we found a ways to, um, um, to go get through those uh, challenges. So let's start from the Looker Guild. So one uh, thing that we thought about, I think it was about one, one year ago, one and a half year ago, we said, okay, uh, we can't really support uh, 60 analysts. I found myself answering uh, just every day, each day, every day, answering to uh, analysts, uh, finding them solutions, supporting them in Looker. And it, it's, it's been a huge challenge because I couldn't do anything else besides supporting them. So we thought what we can do. And we've came up with this Looker Guild um, uh, solution. So we actually picked up 
uh, one re representative, one uh, very um, uh, dedicated analyst who is actually already familiar very well uh, with Looker and with the all KPIs of the specific department, and uh, they become a, a Looker Guild member. So currently the guild is about uh, 10 analysts. Each one of them is from different departments and they represent actually all the needs of their team and of their stakeholders. And now I'm a, a guild master of this guild. And now when I work uh, with the 10 analysts, it's much, much more easier for us to give them the best solution. We implement best practices. We make sure all the KPIs and everything is aligned. We have uh, once in a month, month, we have sync, uh, new features that are, uh, came up in Looker, um, new product that we as a BI team uh, could be able to provide them. If we would like to share something between the team, because not always you know what the other team does. So actually we also found ourselves duplicating data sets and duplicating uh, different measures KPIs. So we thought, okay, we can share all the, all the stuff that we do inside the guild, guild, and they are actually responsible for passing it to their team and implementing everything that we've been talking about. Um, so it gave us a great, great solution for all this scale in the self-serve uh, support. And we also give our uh, end users some time and explorer permission because why not? You have data. It's a very simple, um, just picking your, uh, uh, your fields and you can, start, you can start analyzing and building actually ad hoc reports and ad hoc queries. So we started to grant Explorer permission or all, all our data set to, um, to some end users, even from the CSM and finance and other departments. And they actually build them, th themselves everything that they need on a daily basis without um, needing to approach an analyst and wait for them to create it for them and the need to approach the BI team and wait long time until we will have this task done. Um, so, so this is uh, about the Looker Guild. Uh, so the objectives basically of, the, of this guild was optimize the interface between the BI team and the analytics team, which was completely um, done in this field and works great. Uh, create intelligent data-driven culture. I mean, not just creating, creating, creating content without any ability to maintain and monitor what do you have and uh, uh, do you have accurate KPIs and so, so on and so forth. So they are like data guards for us in this field. Uh, keep Looker as one source of truth for all AF company because when one person does it, it's very uh, complicated. But when you have 10 people that does it, it becomes much more easier. Uh, they are our data guards in terms of data restrictions and permissions because they know exactly what should see every stakeholder in every department. So we gave them the ability to actually restrict the data that they have been working with, with just a, a, a little a row of code inside Looker. Of course, we, we managed the uh, all permissions in Looker and the groups and everything, but they know exactly how to do uh, all the needed restrictions. And they are Looker tech leads. I mean, helping, supporting, implementing best practices and training all other analysts inside their team. We actually, uh, two weeks ago, we launched a great, great new Looker training, which is currently available for all new developers, for all analysts, and even for end users, just to give them, just to make this process for them a little bit easier and a little bit more adaptive to what we do at AppsFlyer and give them a little bit more, more content besides just the technical um, training on the tool. And it's currently also our onboarding process for every new, at least analyst, or even for every new employee, they have to do a looker, a looker training before they get user. Um, so, uh, Another challenge was for us, as I said before, all the decentralizing data uh, structure and uh, all the challenges that we've been fa facing. About two years ago, we started to think about data centralization, uh, about having data warehouse, 
because eventually we work directly on our data lake. We have many, many sources directly connected today to Looker, uh, Athena, BigQuery, a lot of small RDS databases. And we saw that in time, we started to become a little bit bottleneck inside the BI team. And this is something that we definitely don't, uh, don't want to um, become. We would like to have one source of truth above our data lake sort of data warehouse to become one source of tr truth for Looker and for our users. Um, the heavy ETL that we run constantly, it's a time and a cost consumer. Um, data accuracy, as I said, uh, syncing many different tables to many different data uh, so, uh, sources to be able to join between them, uh, cost us a little bit data accuracy issues. Delayed data delivery. Um, once you connect it directly to Data Lake, it all, it's almost real-time analytics. All data that comes from, you can uh, analyze it directly, immediately. When you need to run at nightly um, aggregations and Spark and ETLs, it becomes much more delayed. So you have a two days delay of data, one day delay of data, and it's not so real-time as we um, supposed to be. Uh, performance issues um, after we've got so big and the scale of users and running so many concurrent queries on Athena become a huge, huge performance issue for us. We've started to see queries not just getting in minutes. I mean, minutes is a lot for a BI tool. I mean, no, no one from uh, managers and C-level and VP level and even any, any other um, User don't want to wait several minutes for this dashboard to uh, came up. It's a really frustrating um, user experience and we didn't want it to happen. So uh, even we've got much more resource, resources from AWS, we still had a lot of time waiting for queries, even sometimes 10, 20 minutes for query to, 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 to get results. So we thought, okay, we need to, do some kind of restructure and we need to do some kind of change. Uh, we, all, we also wanted to provide self-service data platform for analysts. I mean, we don't want them to wait each time for us to create them this ETL and uh, join for them different PERC files to be able to, to run it very quickly. Uh, and eventually, of course, reduce the cost of all of this uh, um, stack and all of the service that we provide that becomes actually very, very expensive during those years. So after almost two years of searches, after evaluating um, four data warehouses, uh, Snowflake, Vertica, Dreamio. Um, we were actually were very frustrating because we couldn't find a solution that will meet our uh, our needs. Uh, first of all, huge amount of data, big, 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 big data to be able to analyze, not in minutes, in seconds. I mean, we already have a solution for minutes. We want to be able to analyze it in seconds. The second one was the issue of duplicating all our data lake and to store it in another data warehouse. I mean, it was so out of budget. You can imagine how expensive it is to save petabytes of data in different data sets. So duplicating the data and paying all this cost twice was absolutely unacceptable for us. So we've, we was looking for a solution where we won't need to duplicate all our data inside. Uh, and there were some other KPIs that we took in, into consideration, but those were the, the two basic limitation. Um, none of the uh, data warehouse mentioned could handle uh, our needs. I mean, yeah, we could rise a cluster of uh, 50 EC2 machines and running some uh, uh, quite uh, um, great performance and running some queries, but the, the, the cost of it was so uh, huge that it was just out of budget. And eventually we came up with Firebolt and we actually ran the same POC, the same use case that I've prepared. So the comparison will be, you know, fair enough. We run the same use case on Firebolt. Just presenting, I will explain about the dashboard. We uh, chose one dashboard when we needed to join 
four different Porque files, each one of them was a couple of uh, dozens of billions of rows, and we couldn't do it in Athena completely. So the solution that we were using for this dashboard was actually aggregating all this data into much higher level, running Sparjo BTL behind the scenes on a nightly uh, basis, and just presenting just the, the relevant data set for this dashboard. And it also took a couple of minutes um, for Athena to load it up. And eventually when Firebolt uh, showed us the, the, the speed and the scale, the elasticity we was very curious. And eventually we've got a result of minutes, even I think some of the KPIs loaded in milliseconds, sorry, not minutes, seconds. We've seen results for seconds and milliseconds for the same dashboard. And we were quite amazed. I mean, I, I couldn't believe that there, there is actually a data warehouse that could, that can handle it. And the, the, the great um, uh, benefit of it, it was that it wouldn't cost us much, so much money as storing and duplicating our data. Um, so the instance performance and the scales and the and fully elasticity and everything. I mean, Firebolt just doing some magic behind the scenes. They're ingesting, uh, sorting, compressing, and using uh, different indexes for analyzing the data. They also utilize the CPU of the machines uh, when running a query and it worked. It actually worked. Um, so just to give you some numbers, um, this dashboard that we want to uh, check called uh, calls uh, the biz dashboard. This is a cross company dashboard that is open for all thousand users that combines all our traffic data from different sources, different Porque files, from different Kafka topics, which we would like to join and combine together and also join it to Salesforce data to be able to see uh, some uh, additional enrichments about our customers and present it to all the company. So in Athena, it took us about two months of uh, Spark development work to build this data set and run it in uh, behind the scenes. It also took us a lot of resources because we wanted to run it about two years back of data to be able to analyze some, some uh, historical data. So all this process was quite a, a, a long time uh, developing process. In Firebolt, we write this dashboard in two weeks of work without any Spark jobs behind the scenes, just only running a SQL that just joined the data and uh, presented it to Looker. It took us lots of resources to run two years back data, as I said, um, cost and efficiency. And in Firebolt, we just directly connected to all our raw, raw data uh, in S3. I mean, it's aggregated, but it's as it, as it comes in S3. And we had natively all the historical data available in real time without any delay, without any limitations. Uh, ETL on a daily basis that you need to monitor, that you need to sometimes adjust for different companies' needs and no need for ETL uh, at Firebolt. And to delay a uh, two day delayed uh, data and near real time analytics on side of Firebolt. So we was uh, quite amazed uh, by this POC and we said, okay, guys, uh, you did it on your, uh, we did it on your environment, on your lab, we provided some uh, hashed and, marked, and masked uh, data sets. So we said, okay, okay, okay. We would like to run it on production on our environment, on our real production data. And we did the same inside Apps Flyer on our real data and it worked again. Um, so we took it to the next level. I mean, we divided the POC to three phases. One was just a simple use case joining to, uh, to Porque files. It was passed a long time ago successfully. Um, this was the second case. And I think we all also through, uh, get through the, the third use case, which was like about four, um, 400 uh, billions uh, of rows in one Porque file, join it to another uh, file and also Again, it worked um, defining some indexes and some uh, something on the data just worked like a magic. So um, 
About the current state of Firebolt, we've started implementing it about a couple of months ago. I think it was start of uh, 21. Uh, this dashboard is running fully in production uh, without any limitation, without anything, cross company traffic data, uh, hundreds of users. And we actually already have got really, really, really uh, great uh, feedback from our C-level and VP level for, from our very, very heavy uh, users of this dashboard that was struggling with the uh, with the performance before and they've said wow it's so uh, quickly it's running so great so the feedback is great um, fully automated process of migrating tables from Athena to Firebolt um, because this is the goal eventually to migrate everything uh, that's not running in Athena and eventually migrate everything to Firebolt. So we have already already have a process that does it automatically and map our tables and um, uh, definitions. Uh, we have already started to implement Firebolt inside the analytics team, uh, migrating tables and also migrating the LookML and dashboard. And in, in this use case, it was quite easy and na natively because just after creating a, a Firebolt connection, we just copy paste or our code to Firebolt connection and uh, defined a different uh, model for the dashboard and it was just working the same as it worked before. So yes, it's quite a, a, a long project. I mean, migrating all the work that we did during three years will take us some time, um, but it's already in progress and it's um, working quite uh, great. <clears throat> And for the implementation in short term and long term, how we see it and how we would like to implement it, uh, Firebolt inside the company. So replacing Athena database completely, we don't need a reason to uh, wait for queries for minutes. Um, getting rid of materialized views. I mean, the materialized views that we were creating to get better performance. Um, for our queries, we don't need them anymore. So we can run directly on Firebolt and get our queries and all the great optimization that they do. Getting rid also of some Spark jobs ETL as it was at the biz dashboard. If you need to join some big, huge data set, um, no worries. You have now a database that you can do it natively. And uh, separate a... Um, at autonomic DBs for each analytics team. I mean, really providing them with a self-serve uh, infrastructure and BI approach. Um, they will have, each analytics team will have their own DB with their own permissions and connections to all the tables. So they can manage uh, completely autonomic this all their data set and won't be dependent on everyone, neither on uh, different teams or on the BI team. And on the long term, I mean, our, our vision is eventually extending Firebolt to our R&D and our data lake. I mean, currently we use S3 and we use Druid for our uh, analytics aggregated data to present it for our customer in dashboard. And as it's a production DB, we can't use it for internal analytics. We use BigQuery and we use ClickHouse inside R&D for our uh, quick analytics of the last uh, 48 hours data. So potentially um, like long-term uh, thinking, maybe we could replace also uh, them because performance is always, always an issue um, on this huge scale that we have. Um, and uh, just to, to summarize some, something that uh, I've learned during the way of, uh, you know, working in such a, a huge uh, scale in big data, self-service BI, I mean, it's, it's a great approach and as much automation as possible is, is a benefit because you don't want to work um, for the data and for the technology, you just want the technology work for you. So make it work for you. Make as much uh, automatic process as possible. It will uh, it will do your life much much easier. Um, the data lake, I mean, eventually centralized data warehouse is a is a best practice for BI and analytics. You want all your data eventually to sit in one place. Uh, be prepared for uh, quick changes. I mean, you need to quickly adapt your solution. You need to be ready for 
if something that was developed a couple of months ago, um, it, and it was good a couple of months ago, it could be uh, not good for now. It could, it could be not meeting your needs now. So you need to be ready to, okay, let's drop it. Let's leave it. Let's start something else. Not always, but sometimes you need to be ready just, okay, let's think how we can quickly adapt our solution, our uh, um, uh, support and everything else. Um, making mistakes, I mean, what I've learned uh, during many, many years in this field, all the mistakes that we do, we can try and we can make mistakes, we can try different things, but they all, all of them are just milestones. They're just milestones during the way of getting the, the final, the great solution that you wanna provide. Um, so try new technologies and approaches. Um, we've tried several different approaches and we've tried several different technologies during the way because we was uh, uh, searching and seeking for a solution and uh, we never stop. We always trying uh, something new and adapting our infrastructure and uh, consult with partners. Um, App, a Firebolt helped us a lot, a lot during the way. And we also open to consult with different, even third party companies and uh, consultants. They have a lot of practice and experience in this field. They can help you. Um, like with Looker also, we've got a, a huge support for them. Once we face some challenges, we approach them and we uh, consulted with them. I mean, guys, how does other customers do it? Do you have some similar um, uh, customer stories? We would like to uh, consult and see what we can do differently. And all this uh, uh, help from outside could be very, very uh, useful, and um, I, I really, um, I really like this uh, way of uh, working and uh, thinking and uh, gathering different uh, solutions. Um, so yeah, um, that was it from my Thank side. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank Hope you very you much. I want to follow helpful. up. So before wrap, there's a bunch of questions I want to ask you. So before uh, we uh, follow up with questions. Uh, from the crowd uh, and others. If you're interested in hearing more about uh, Firebolt in the chat window, uh, you can uh, see a link uh, where to sign up uh, to register and book a session with us and hear more about uh, Firebolt. Um, now, Alexandra, I have a question. So in, in the question that uh, we have here for, from the audience, was there any worry about having to duplicate the data in terms of cost? Uh, when moving data, you, you were running on Athena, then copy the data into Firebolt, that's a copy. Was that an issue? Copying the data from Athena to Firebolt? I mean, from, from the lake, from S3 into Firebolt from S3. Is, another, is another copy. Uh, were you worried initially about the uh, cost implications of that and how did that uh, turn out? Um, actually not, because eventually we saw with the, a, Together with you guys, we just calculated and we evaluated how much storage we will need on your side. And actually, because the data is so compressed on your side, so we needed much, much less storage. So the cost wasn't even an issue for storing the data. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, so yeah, storage uh, compression is one thing, but also I think um, that at the end of the day, you know, Fireball charges. AWS S3 list prices. So it's $33 a terabyte. Uh, typically in the big data use cases, the compute, this is where the big dollars go to. Uh, so I think this also, that was also part of the reason. Uh, and about sort of, did you evaluate other solution next to Firebolt? Was there, any, can you tell a little bit more about the selection process of, uh, of the query engine and the warehouse? Um, so once we ran through the POC, we were comparing the same use case, as I said before, the same uh, uh, POC for the same BIS dashboard, comparing with other uh, tools like Vertica and, and uh, Snowflake. So the, the 
initially the process of just storing the data, I mean, uh, duplicated was much more uh, expensive that we couldn't afford us. And uh, not just the, the cost of the storage of data, we also needed to pay a lot of money for a subscription, for users that are constantly running. We needed to take into consideration the concurrent queries, the amount of users that we will need to, uh, uh, to pay for. And eventually all this cost together was very expensive. Um, like you said before, it, it just uh, uh, accept the compression uh, for the data. We just uh, select the EC2 machine, the analytic engine that we need in Firebolt. We know exactly how much it costs because it's an EC2 machine already um, stored on our and on our own account in S in AWS as the apps flyer. And we actually could see exactly how much it will cost us. And the cost is minimal for, for the EC2 machine running. And uh, yes, yeah, so it doesn't matter how much traffic you run, it will be the same. Um, comparing to Vertica and uh, Snowflake, the, 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 the cost of this was huge. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here on how far on Firebolt this time, you know, how Firebolt runs ELT uh, processes, Airflow, DBT, store procedures. So uh, uh, Airflow is typically what people use most of the time. Everything in Firebolt can be uh, generated or, or managed programmatically. So it's very easy with the Airflow to, to trigger your, your ELT queries. Uh, we're in the process of uh, building a DBT connector. So that should be out uh, soon. So uh, uh, we hope to have a good update soon about that. Um, and, and that's it. Another question. So people are asking, you know, how are, is Firebolt different or how does it differentiate from, from Snowflake? Um, and Snowflake, you know, Firebolt does have a lot of respect for Snowflake because they definitely deserve their huge success and they introduced uh, an exciting new architecture to, the, to this space with the decoupled storage and compute and the ability for us as users to control the, uh, the compute that we were using. And we built our architecture um, in the same, uh, in a very similar way but also a little bit different. So, so the key dif differences are, are first speed. Um, Firebolt is dramatically faster. So Snowflake is very comparable to Redshift, BigQuery, also Presto Athena. This set of modern tools represent part of the same generation of, of query engines and data warehouses. Firebolt is an order of magnitude uh, faster. So there's no POC where we don't see at least a 10X performance improvement for each query. And if we don't, we consider it a bug. Uh, this is why also Alexander here was able to sort of to, to enjoy the fact that things that were timing out on Athena were taking a few seconds in, um, uh, in Firebolt. So for use cases where the data is large, uh, it's really not a comparison. Firebolt is dramatically faster. But not only that, Firebolt is also much more hardware efficient. Efficiency is a very core thing in our technology. Efficiency means that we're not just fast, but we also know how to do that without being super CPU hungry. And in the cloud, at the end of the day, we pay for compute. When we use Athena or Snowflake, we're paying for compute. And, and if the technology needs a lot of compute to return queries fast, you're paying a lot. Uh, and Firebolt, uh, in the way we use indexes, uh, in, the, in the way our core engine is so modern, we actually are, are not CPU hungry. And this is why where you see a lot of cost efficiencies come in. And oftentimes the ability to suddenly tackle use cases that, that were out of reach uh, before. And finally, Firebolt is also, compared to Snowflake, uh, a big believer in giving users a little bit more control over what they run and how they run it uh, in terms of selections of what kind of uh, compute you run. You have more choices uh, than the rather what we think trivial, uh, you know, t-shirt sizing uh, and so forth. So we typically target data engineers in modern data stacks who appreciate more control over what they're running and how. Uh, so these are, are the main differences. Um, Another question, uh, have we run TPCH uh, benchmarks? So we haven't published uh, the TPCH or TPCDS benchmarks, which we're uh, working on actually. However, we typically talk about them all the time because if you look at TPCDS, which is actually the, the better benchmark for suited to data warehousing, you see that when, and I encourage you to Google benchmarks, Snowflake, Redshift, et cetera, you get a, typically the first Google result is a TPC DS benchmark run by uh, Fivetran, and they refresh it every year, so it's pretty cool. But what you see there is that already from a, a one terabyte scale, the median of uh, query response times on Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, and, and Presto is around eight to 11 seconds. And many queries in benchmark take over 20 seconds. 
Whereas Firebolt is all about consistently delivering sub-second performance at one terabyte scale, but also multi dozens and hundreds of terabytes scale. And that's what we do day in, day out uh, in our POCs. Uh, and lastly, people are asking, can we get our hands on a trial account? So I'll explain how that works. So we're, because we're rather new to this space, uh, uh, we do not have a sort of service everybody can sign up and play environment just yet. Uh, but rather just contact us. Uh, and what we typically do is set up a call, walk you through what we have, um, and sort of try to kick off a, a POC. Uh, and the way we do POCs is we tell you, give us access to a bucket of data uh, in S3, as much data as possible, real world data. Give us a few examples of queries or dashboards that you run today. Tell us how long they take and, and how much they cost you, which, which compute you run on. And, and then we show you how you would do the same in Firebolt. And, uh, uh, and we do that with our solution architect to, to sort of guide you through the unique things about Firebolt. And typically, and very consistently, the, the outcome is as follows. You see dramatic performance improvements on the one hand, and on the other hand, also dramatic uh, efficiency gains. So typically hardware that's smaller, per, uh, cheaper per hour because we're so hardware efficient. Um, okay, we're about to run out of time. Uh, there's more questions uh, I could answer, but uh, I hope we'll be able to, to follow up. Uh, and, mm, and that's it. So Alexandra, thank you very, very much. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to, to join us here at this webinar. Uh, and see you next time. Thank you, guys. Thanks, boss. Bye-bye.